this is one of my favorite parts in chem because you're given two reactants and you basically need to figure out what your products are. And so we talk a little bit about that whole idea of like doing like garage chemistry or what they call basement chemistry, where people just, very unsafe by the way, not recommended at all, where people will react two things together. And there are people that have, there are stories of people that have blown off their hands. There are stories of people that have died from inhaling toxic chemicals or have been sent to the hospital um, from inhaling toxic chemicals. Now there may be so much energy that ends up being released from a reaction and what you can do once you know what your products are is you can backtrack and figure out how much energy was either absorbed or how much energy was being released from any one reaction. And so that's what this unit is about. So what happens is there are a whole bunch of different reactions, but they brought it down to five simple types of reactions and that's what we're gonna focus on in this class is five major types. Again, there are thousands and thousands of reactions outside of these five. Organic chemistry, for example, has its own entire section of chemistry devoted to it that has a whole bunch of different um, equations, either that are memorized or interpreted as well. So we're gonna just talk about five. And the five types that we're gonna talk about are combustion, single displacement, double displacement, what's called synthesis, and then decomposition, okay? So we're gonna start off talking about combustion. And so combustion is when an element or a compound reacts with oxygen. So you have to have oxygen as a reactant, meaning it's going to be to the left of the arrow. May not necessarily be burning. For example, if I react, and we're going to do two examples here, and then we'll add a couple more over on the right side. If I have iron, and then iron reacts with oxygen that's in the air. Now in the presence of water, water would be there as well. Anybody know what you get when iron just reacts with the oxygen in the air? You get rust. Awesome. And the formula for rust is Fe2O3, which means it's actually iron 3 oxide. Okay? That's a formula. And then we would balance this reaction. So we have start with the more complex reactant. So I'm going to start with the O2. And I've got three on the other side. Change your odd to even. even. How do you do that? Two. Multiply by two. So I'm going to double this one. And so that makes it six, which means this one needs to multiply by three, so I make that one six. And then I've got four irons here, so I'm gonna put a four in front of the iron. Now that's combustion, okay? But most of you are thinking, really, is that combustion? You would think of combustion as being something exploding, something burning, okay? But it doesn't necessarily need to be. As long as you have oxygen as a reactant, then that's combustion. So let me show you an example. Anybody heard of the Hindenburg explosion that happened in 1937? Do you remember what the Hindenburg, what it was made of? What gas they ended up using? They used hydrogen gas. And what happened to the hydrogen gas, it made it across the ocean. And then when it got to New Jersey for landing, a whole bunch of people are waiting there videotaping this. And so this is a news reporter. This is a quick one minute um, video on this. But watch what happens in the one minute. Let's turn down the lights here in one second. And there are people on board, okay? There were multiple passengers. 35 of which died. Out of the nose of the ship, and uh, they've been taken a hold out down on the field by a number of men. The back motors of the ship are just holding it uh, just enough to keep it. The first in the back. So we no longer make anything like that anymore, like the Hindenburg was. So, um, so that's combustion, okay? It was the hydrogen that reacted with the oxygen. It was a really nice idea to be able to get something to fly that way um, and, and fairly cheap, but because of the way that it burns. Um, and rocket fuel, anybody know what they use for rockets too? What f the fuel is that they use for rockets? They actually have a tank of hydrogen and another tank of oxygen and they do burn them together. 
Um, but that in that case too, it was the way that it was set up. So they do the same thing in rockets um, for rocket fuels, and I'll show you a demonstration with that with the hydrogen and the oxygen. It's a huge boom too that takes place when you react them. So let's do another example. Another example of combustion. And this is, this is a, a, a set of different reactions where you can get a whole bunch of them that will all come up with the same formulas uh, as your products. And so we're going to memorize it. And I have a way of memorizing it. So let's say that you had something like um, propane. Propane's formula, and if you remember, so it was Matt eats peanut butter, then it goes pentane, hexane, heptane. Do you remember the next one? What's eight? Octane, nine? Nonane, ten? Decane, good. So let's come back to propane. Propane would be Matt eats peanuts, so how many carbons? Three carbons, so it'd be C3. Remember the other element is H. Times two plus two would be eight. Very good, C3H8, that would be propane. Let's react this with oxygen. And any time that you react a hydrocarbon, a CH or a CHO compound with oxygen, you're always going to get two compounds. You're going to get a CO compound, not carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, awesome. And you're going to get an HO compound, but not HO, it's H2O, which means it's water. Those are the two compounds that you're always going to get when you react to CH or a CHO compound. So I'm going to show you a couple more examples. But this is not balanced, so let's balance this. I've got three carbons on the left, so on the right, I'm going to put a three in. I'm just going to change colors here to do my balancing. So I've got three there. Why would I not touch my oxygens yet? Because I just changed my oxygens, but why would you not touch the oxygens yet? Yeah, there's another oxygen. Save it for last. There's one there, one there, one there. I want to save it for last. So let's come back and do my hydrogens. I've got eight here and two here. What do I do? Hydrogen. Put a four. So now my hydrogens and my carbons are good. I just need to do my oxygens now. On this side, I've got six plus four, which gives me a total of 10. So what do I do here? Five. Perfect. Okay. So that's a little bit of review of balancing equations as well. Now, there are two other reactions that I want to do that are also going to be combustion reactions. And they are... C12H22O11, which is sugar reacting with oxygen. Sugar reacting with oxygen, so burning sugar. And the other one I want to do with you is methanol. Um, or, yeah, methanol is good. Methanol is alcohol. It's like methane, which is CH4, but this is CH3OH. I would have to give you the formula for it because we didn't learn how to name uh, alcohols. Plus O2 yields. Okay, it says, hydrocarbons are compounds made up mainly of carbon and hydrogen. They also may contain oxygen or nitrogen. When hydrocarbons react with oxygen gas, they will always form CO2 and H2O. So here's my saying, and we're going to memorize this together, okay? We're going to say it together. The saying is, reacting O2 with CHO or CHO. So reacting oxygen with a CH or a CHO compound. But it doesn't have to be CHO, it could be like C6H12O6. Okay, it doesn't have to be CH, it would be like C2H6, or maybe it's C10H22. So it could be a whole C, a different CH compound. Always, in all caps, always produces CO and HO. And then we're going to say it three times. We're going to say co and ho, co and ho, co and ho. So here's the saying. Reacting O2 with cho or cho always produces co and ho, co and ho, co and ho. But it's not CO. What is it? CO2. And it's not HO. It's H2O. Okay? Everybody say it with me just one time. But you have to repeat this three times. Ready? Here we go. Reacting O2 with cho or cho always produces co and ho, co and ho, co and ho. All right? I know it's ridiculous, but that's the only one that you need to memorize. Now, keep in mind again, why isn't this co and ho then? Why isn't this CO2 and H2O? Yeah, there's no carbon and there's no hydrogen. Remember, by the law of conservation of matter, you have to have the same elements on both sides of the equation. And if there is no carbon and hydrogen in here, then you can't make water and carbon dioxide, okay? 
So in this case, it only happens if you have a CH or a CHO compound. So you can still have combustion if it's not carbon, a carbon-hydrogen-oxygen compound, but then it's a different type of reaction. I'll explain that when we get to synthesis later. Okay. So let's come back to these two reactions. Sugar with oxygen, everybody would give you what two compounds? CO2 and H2O. Awesome. And then you'd have to balance it. Okay? We're not going to balance them, but you would have to balance it. What about CH3OH reacting with oxygen? What two products are you going to get, everybody? Same thing. CO2 and H2O. And then your balancing is what is going to be different. So again, you can have any CH or any CHO compound. As long as it's combusting, you're going to get CO2 and H2O. Okay. Next type of reaction is called single displacement. And I call this not just football substitution, but really any kind of sports substitution. So whether you play basketball, hockey, volleyball, soccer, um, lacrosse, any other team sports that I'm missing here, rugby, uh, no, not individualized sports, uh, individuals, I'm glad you said that, swimming and diving may be more like individual sports, um, same thing with like skiing, um, so even tennis, unless you're playing doubles, even tennis is more of like an individualized sport, so this has to be more of like a team sport substitution. What's going to happen is, you have this person that is basically sitting on the sideline, so this person is on the sideline, they're benched right now, okay? This here is your team, and your team is playing on the field. What's going to happen is the person that's sitting on the sideline needs to go into play, okay? And so who is going to come out is the same type of player. So in other words, if you play hockey, and you're a forward, and you're being benched, and you're ready to go out, do they replace you with a goalie? Is it a good idea? No. Probably not. Okay? So you want to replace a goalie with a goalie. If you've got a forward, you want to replace a forward with a forward. So who's going to come out is another forward. Now, if you've ever played uh, team sports, which I know you all have, if you've ever played team sports, like think of a game of soccer. Okay? If, um, who in here plays soccer? Okay, so let's say that two of you, um, let's say, Eddie, you're playing, okay? and then let's say I'm going to end up putting you in for Eddie. Is the team going to play the same way? No. Even if they're identical twins, when I played soccer, I actually played with identical twins. When they swapped out, when they, um, and they, they didn't even play the same positions anyway, okay? One of them played defense and the other one played forward. When they swap them out, they don't play the same way, okay? The team reacts differently. Maybe one person is faster than the other person. Maybe they're just better at, uh, at forward and the other person is a better defense player. A defensive player. So they're going to play differently. What I'm talking about is, let's first talk about the type of player. In chemistry, what do you think I mean by type of player? Give me any, any guess as to what you think I mean by the type of player needs to be the same. Type of element. What do you mean type of element? Not even just group. Not even just, it wouldn't be the same element because then there's no change. Same what? Same state, like solid, liquid, gas? Not even. It's even simpler than that. Metal, non-metal. Perfect. It's going to be either metal, non-metal, or you can say cation, anion, positive, negative. Okay? So if you replace something that would be a metal, it would be another metal coming out. Or if it's a non-metal going in, it'll be a non-metal coming out. But it may not be. It may be polytomic ions. So just keep that in mind. It may be... Um, and I also want to review real quick club cap. So I want you to keep in mind that elements that are alone in nature do not carry a charge. When do they become charged? When they lose or gain electrons, meaning when they bond. So remember, sodium was hanging out at the club, and sodium had 11 protons and 11 electrons, meaning we call that, starts with an N, we call it neutral. neutral. So what happens is chlorine walks in the door and sodium wants to give chlorine one of its electrons. Why does sodium want to give away one electron to have ten? To become more like the noble gas. Nice! The noble gases are stable. Neon has ten. So if it has a full sublevel or full energy level, it makes it more stable. Chlorine has 17 electrons. Why does chlorine want to gain one? Because then it will have 18 like argon does. Perfect. So remember, the metals will want to lose electrons and the non-metals want to gain, okay? 
But in nature, when they're alone, they don't carry a charge. It's not until they bond and come together, then they lose and gain electrons. So you know what you do crisscross? Um, crisscross, absolute, reduce. You're only going to do that when they come together. Otherwise, there's no charge. So I'll explain this as I, as I go along. Let's do an example. So the example I'm going to do, I'll do um, a simple example. We're not going to use polyatomic ions yet. So let's do something like um, strontium, which is SR on the periodic table. It has no charge right now, okay? So it's just strontium. We're going to have strontium reacting with, let's do something like sodium, um, sodium fluoride. So let's do Na, which has a plus one charge, and F, which is a minus charge. Okay. Strontium is sitting on the sideline, okay? And what's going to happen is strontium is going to go into play. And when strontium goes into play, either sodium or fluorine needs to come out. And the question is, who is strontium more like? So if you look at the periodic table, strontium is on the left. It's a metal. So which one of these is the metal? Sodium. sodium. So what's going to happen is we're going to do our arrow. And sodium is going to end up coming out. And when sodium comes out, it does not come out. It takes its electron back before it comes out, okay? So it now has a zero charge. It's not charged anymore. So sodium comes out, so these are switching places right here. And now strontium's gonna go in. But when strontium goes in, it's gonna lose how many electrons? What's strontium's charge on the periodic table? Two. Plus two. So strontium's a plus two, very good. And fluorine is a negative one. So what's the formula for it? SRF2, awesome. So notice it changed. It was one F here, now it's F2. Is that because it's diatomic? No. No. What does it mean? When is an element diatomic? When it's by itself. Mm -hmm. Only when it's alone. And that's not alone, it's with strontium. Okay? So now they have a charge, but this doesn't and this didn't. But these had charges. So they only carry charges when they're bonded. Okay? That's when they exchange electrons. Now we need to balance our equation. So I'm going to switch colors and start with the more complex reactant. Which one is more complex? Sodium fluoride. NAF. Good. Why? Because it has more elements. That's it. Okay? So you're just going to count your elements. The one has more is the one you're going to start with. 1Na, 1Na, 1F, 2Fs. So what do I do here? Put a 2. That changes my Na's to 2. So what do I do here? Two. Put a 2. And then 1SR, 1SR, and I'm done. All right? Now, if the non-metal was going in, be careful. Because if this were a non-metal and fluorine would come out, how would fluorine come out? Diatomic. Awesome. Remember Brinkelhoff. Okay? Fluorine is part of that, so it would actually come out as F2, not F. So just keeping those in mind. All right, let's try the next one. The next one is my favorite. This is called double displacement. So here's my story, okay? Amy and Carrie are twin sisters, okay? So I've got Amy and Carrie and their twin sisters. Amy is dating Brian, and Carrie is dating Dan. So they're going to bed one day, and Amy says, hey, Carrie, how's everything going? And she's like, it's fine. She's like, how's Dan doing? Everything's okay. You know, it's just kind of getting a little bit boring. What about you? And Amy's like, yeah, she's like, same thing. She's like, I love Brian. He's such a great guy, but things are kind of getting a little bit boring, too. Do you see where this is going? Yeah. What do they do? Switch. They switch. Okay? Dirty minds. They are just going to the movies. That's all they're doing. They're going to the movies. There's nothing else happening. Okay? But they're going to do a little bit of a swap just to see if they figure it out. Okay? Just to have a little fun with it. So you can see here that now Amy's with who? Dan. Dan. And Carrie's with Brian. Brian. Now, these two could be switched. So I could actually have Carrie, Brian, and Amy, Dan. But what you cannot have is the one that's in front is positively charged. Okay? And the one that's after is negative. You are not going to have negative positive. So it would not be BC or DA. Okay? It has to go positive negative when you write your formulas out. It's always positive first. The other thing that's not going to happen is you're not going to have two positives or two negatives together. It's always positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, so let's try this out and see how we do. I'm going to give you one that's a little bit harder. Let's see if I remember the one I did in the other class. It was a really good, hard one to balance. So we practiced balancing equations a little bit too in our rules for that. So let's do, okay, let's start with, um, uh, let's do barium phosphate. So BA, barium, has a plus 2 charge, and phosphate is going to be our dye, and so that's PO4 with a negative 3. So when I crisscross, I get BA3, PO4, 2. Plus, let's do 
potassium. Um, let's do this one is not a polyatomic ion and see what happens with this. Let's do potassium sulfide. So K has a plus one charge and sulfide is S with a negative two. So we're gonna get K2S. Okay. Either our girls are gonna switch or our guys are gonna switch, it doesn't matter. As long as you're either switching positive with positive or negative with negative, okay? So I'm gonna do barium switches with potassium. Okay, so I'm gonna circle those and these are the two I'm gonna swap. Once your formulas are written, you can no longer change them, okay? So let's swap them. So instead, K is gonna come here. So who's potassium with now? Phosphate. Are they going to react differently? Yes, they're gonna react differently. So just like I said, if you have, it doesn't matter when you do the swap, even if they're identical twins, they're not gonna act the same way, okay? More than likely, the guys are gonna figure it out, okay? So K is gonna switch here, and so now I get K, which has a plus one charge, is now with PO4, and PO4 has a negative three charge. So what's my formula? K3, PO4. Now you don't need parentheses because I'm crisscrossing a one, but I like to put it in a bag. Remember, for the sake of balancing, it makes it easier to put it in a bag. And then you also don't confuse having four of them. Okay, they don't, we don't have four phosphates, we only have one PO4. Plus, who's switching here now? BA is now with S. Bar barium has a plus two charge and S is a negative two. So what happens? They cancel, they cancel out. out. So those are gone. Now we balance it. I'm gonna switch colors. And I've got, uh, which one's better to start with? The left or the right? The left, why? More elements, perfect. More elements is the one you wanna start with, okay? Three BAs, so what do I do here? Put a three. Now that makes it three S's. So I'm gonna come back here, so what do I do with this one? Put a three. That makes it six K's. So what do I do here? Put a two, Put a two to make it six. And that's two PO4s, now I already have two PO4s. So that one wasn't bad, that was pretty good. Okay, not too hard. All right, synthesis. So we already did synthesis, and you didn't even know it. The one that we did that was synthesis was iron plus oxygen gives you iron oxide. In synthesis what happens is you have X plus Y, maybe plus Z, maybe you have four elements or four <coughs> compounds, and they come together to form one compound. And I'm writing it this way because it's like having two elements or you can have more than that. You could have three elements and it can be a ternary compound. But the thing with synthesis is you have multiples coming together to form one, okay? The only way you're gonna know synthesis is if you're starting with two elements, okay? Because it could be combustion, but it's not gonna be single displacement. It's not gonna be double displacement. So your only choice if you're starting with two elements is that they come together to form one, for example. So we already did iron plus oxygen yields iron oxide. So let's do another one. Let's do um, beryllium reacting with, um, let's do it with bromine, which is Br2. Um, maybe I'll do a different one. Let's do nitrogen, N2, that's better, okay. If you ever get two elements, the only thing you can do with two elements, because if you switch them, then you didn't have a reaction. You just swapped them, and you're gonna get N2 plus BE, and that's not anything new, okay? So the only thing you're gonna do if you have a reaction with two elements is put them together, okay? When you put them together, make sure you do positive first. So beryllium's gonna get written first, BE with a plus two, and then you're gonna find nitrogen on your periodic table, and what's, nit what's nitrogen's charge? Negative three. So when I crisscross, I get BE3 and two. And now we're gonna balance it, okay? So remember, this is N2 because it's diatomic. This is N2 because I crisscrossed it, okay? So I've got two Ns, two Ns, three BEs, so I just need a three there and I'm done. The only type of synthesis reaction that, you, I'm gonna repeat this, that you can do on your own is if I have two elements, but it's possible that I don't give you two elements and I say you form one single compound. For example, you could have something like ammonia. This is not ammonium. What's ammonium? NH4 plus. This is a compound, it's ammonia. 
Let's react it with hydrobromic acid, HBr. Hydrobromic acid, meaning that there's no polyatomic ion, so HBr, plus and minus. And then I would have to tell you that you get one single compound. Okay? Now, this one is not, it looks like double dating. The reason why it's not double dating is in double dating, you actually have to have two ionic compounds. This is not ionic because nitrogen is not a metal. What's nitrogen? No, not no, metal, no. which makes this compound not ionic, but molecular. molecular. Awesome. That's a molecular compound. Okay? So we can't do that swap because you're going to end up with two negatives if you do the swap. So that doesn't work. So if we put it together, anybody want to guess what you get when you put these two together? Combine them. Take a guess. NH4Br. Nice. You get ammonium bromide, which is NH4+, plus, and Br-. minus. You get NH4Br as your compound. Okay. Now, it is already balanced because you have 1N, 1N, 4Hs, 4Hs, 1Br, 1Br. And so that would be the only time where I would tell you how to do synthesis if it weren't two elements, okay? Last thing is decomposition. And decomposition happens when, it says it occurs when energy in the form of heat, light, electricity, or mechanical shock is supplied. And what happens is a compound can actually decompose, which means what? What is decomposition? What does decomposing mean? It's breaking down, okay? So it's breaking down into multiple pieces. And so what we're gonna see is, we're gonna start with one thing, and that one thing is gonna break up. You do not need to memorize these. Everybody bubble this in like three times. Go around three times. You do not need to memorize these, okay? We're going to create a little like tip sheet in a little bit, and I'll, we'll put these down. We'll simplify them. But um, you don't need to memorize them. On the back of your periodic table that um, I give you on tests and quizzes, I actually have decomposition reactions written on there, okay? Some of you may have seen them before and not known what that was for. So I do give you these. You don't have to memorize them. These are templates, though. And you basically need to apply whichever one you're given to the template. Your compound may be slightly different, okay? So this is the last type. So we already talked about combustion. We talked about single displacement, which was like the sideline one where somebody's going into play. We talked about the double dating, where you have two that are switching. And then we just talked about synthesis, where you're making one compound. Now it's the opposite, where you're starting with one and it's breaking down. All right. Let's start with number one. So there are six of these, okay? Oxy acid, let's break it apart. What is oxy referring to? What do you think? Oxygen. And what's an acid? An acid is a compound that starts with hydrogen. So these are acids, meaning that they start with H plus, so it's like H something, with oxygen. For example, carbonic acid would be an oxy acid. So another example of an oxy acid might be like sulfurous acid, H2SO3, or H2SO4. Maybe oxalic acid, oxalate, which is H2C2O4. Maybe nitric acid, HNO3 is nitric acid. Maybe nitrous acid, HNO2. Okay? So these would all be oxy acids. What wouldn't be an oxy acid would be something like HCl. Why not? There's no oxygen. Good. There's no oxygen in it. Okay? So it has to be an acid with oxygen in it in order to use this one. And it says when heated, it decomposes to form water. What's water, everybody? H2O. H2O. Plus the non-metal oxide. Well, we already used hydrogen and oxygen. What's the only one that's left? Carbon. And the non-metal oxide. Oxide is referring to what element? Oxygen. But not carbon monoxide. It's probably carbon dioxide, CO2. Now the cool thing about the decomposition reactions is almost always they balance when they decompose. So you can see I've got two H's, two H's, one C, one C, three O's, and I already have three O's. So that's all set. Let's try the next one. Metallic hydroxides. So there's my metal and there's hydroxide. Okay. So it says when heated, decompose to form the metal oxide and water. So, the, um, what is the metal oxide? Well, the metal is calcium here. What's oxide? Just O, but we have to do our charges. So calcium's a plus two, and oxide is O with a negative two, so those cancel out. So I just get CaO. And everybody knows what water is. It's H2O. Now we're gonna balance it. 
1 Ca, 1 Ca. Oh, should we change water to HOH? No, why not? There's no H on the other side. There's an OH, but there's no H on the other side. You need to have H and OH to make that easier, okay? So I've got two O's, one, two O's, two H's, two H's, I'm done. That's already balanced. Let's try the next one. Metallic carbonate. So there's my carbonate. Decomposes to form the metal oxide. So what's the metal in this case? Lithium. Lithium. And again, it has a plus one charge. Oxide is O with a negative two. So it's Li2O when you crisscross it. And everybody knows carbon dioxide is CO2. One, uh, two LIs, two LIs, one C, one C, save the O for last because it's in multiple places, which we are, three O's and three O's. We're done again. Okay, next one. Metallic chlorates. When heated, so there's my chlorate, not chlorite, not chloride, chlorate, okay? Decomposes to form the metal chloride and oxygen gas. So what's the metal in this case? K, and what's chloride? CL, negative one. So it's just KCL. And oxygen gas is not O, everybody. What is oxygen O2. gas? O2, because it's diatomic. This one, we finally have to balance one. Yay. 1K, 1K, 1CL, 1CL. But then I've got three O's and two O's. Change the, what's the rule? Odd to even rule. Good. There's my odd. How do you change odd to even? Times two. So I'm going to double this. And then that makes it six O's, so I'm gonna make that times three to make it six O's. And then two CLs and two K's, so I need a two in front of it. All right, last two. Metallic oxides, most of them are stable, but some of them will decompose when you heat them to form the metal and oxygen gas. What's the metal in this case? HG. HG. And what's oxygen gas? O2. 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 And then we're just gonna balance it. One HG, one HG, one O, two O's. So I need a two in front of there. And then that makes it a two in front of there. And last one. Remember we talked about electrolysis at the beginning of the year? Yeah. We talked about electrolysis of what? Water. water. So let's do water also. First let's do NaCl. It says into its elements. Don't forget, it's going to be its elements in their natural state. So what are the elements that make up Na and NaCl? Na and, Na and CL. CL. But it's not Na plus CL. That's wrong. CL2, why is it CL2? Brinkelhoff. It's diatomic, Brinkelhoff, perfect. So then I'm gonna balance it, I get one NA, one NA, one CL, two CL, so I need a two on the left, and then that makes it two NA, so I need a two there. And then let's just do water breaking up. What does water break up into, what elements? H, H and O, but it's not H and O, what is it? H2 and O2, o o Brinkelhoff, H, O, both of them are in Brinkelhoff. So then you balance this. So I've got two H's, two H's, one O, two O's. So I need a two on this side. And then that makes it four H's, so I need another two there. And that's basically it for doing um, predicting products. Those are the five major types.